Good morning, you guys. Happy Saturday to everyone who's watching this video when it comes out. Today's going to be a great day because the sun is shining, the skies are blue, and it's my favorite day of the week, which is Goodwill Day. The very first thing that I spotted was this beautiful tray. It has six hand-painted tiles and the outside edges are all carved wood. It was only $7.99 and spring is here, summer is coming, so this will be perfect for entertaining. This one was kind of funny that I just happened to come across a beer stein because I was just having a conversation about how valuable beer steins are. A lot of people collect these and even though I'm not really a big beer drinker for $7.99, this one had a really cool design on it so I decided to go ahead and invest in it. Then I went back for the brass candle holder. This one was really adorable. I love these ones that have the handle on them so you can carry them around, but I decided to pass on it because I had a feeling I was gonna be finding more brass here. This is one of the best places for brass and also kind of odd things like this little dancing ornament lady thing. <laughs> And you can also get flying pigs. I didn't even know that was a thing. I don't think I've ever seen flying pigs before. But this caught my eye. Now this is a Chinese food dog bookend. Usually there are two of them. I scanned all of the shelves and I did not find a second one. But this one did have a stamp on the bottom and it was only $4.99. Look at the color on it. It is such a beautiful piece. This would have been a great basket to pick up if I was still doing flea markets. They look beautiful with towels rolled up in them, but it was a little too big for shipping, so I decided to pass on it. But I did grab this. Now these are little wall hanging planter type things. I am not a huge fan of fake plants, but I think that that could easily be swapped out with something real. I grabbed this candle holder for $6.99. I like to use these as plant stand bases instead of candle holders. Obviously they could be used for either and you can go back and forth, but I thought that this would be a great one to lift your plant up off of your table. I like to display my plants at different height levels, so this is great for adding to give one of them that extra height. These are little wall pockets, and these are great for putting little air plants in them. I don't know if I would ever put a real plant with soil in them because I feel like it would ruin the wood, but you could also put trinkets in them, um, maybe loose change when you walk in your door. So many different uses. I almost grabbed these marble candle holders. They were really pretty, but they did look like they were new. But over here to the left, I did spot a vintage Japanese piece, and I love having a candle holder or a plant on these. They make great little bases. The cart's already starting to look pretty. Now this one is a real antique. This is a W.M. Rogers piece and I was a little scared to flip it over because I knew they were going to be asking a lot for it, but $19.99 is still a great deal. These sell online for over $100 and unfortunately it was not stamped with the solid sterling silver stamp. That would have been a great and exciting find, but it is a really beautiful piece.
This one's kind of neat. It looks like it is a candle holder or maybe it was for chocolate molds. I'm not quite sure what this one's for. It has a stamp on the bottom and it's kind of on the fence and I was about to put it back. And just as I set it down, I remembered that blue was a half off color. And then I was like, $2.50, it looks like it's copper. All right, I'm gonna get that piece. This would have been a really cool little planter, but I wasn't really digging that scene on there, unfortunately, so I left those ones behind. This brass vase was pretty cute, but it was pretty small. And for $6.99, I decided that was a little bit too much. So I didn't grab that one, but I did grab these candle holders. I love these very small minimalist ones. They look great when you put a fun, colorful candle in them. Oh my gosh. All right. You have to stay tuned to see what this turns out to be. I definitely thought it was a beautiful piece of pottery. Oh, just wait for it, you guys. It is not. I have a pair of almost identical bowls to this. They're in more of a brown color in my own kitchen. So even though there was just a single one, these are really pretty Japanese stoneware pieces. So I picked up this one. I keep telling you guys that I don't sell coffee mugs anymore, but then here I am looking at coffee mugs. I used to have an entire shop section designated just to coffee mugs, and I've passed up these blue Villa Flora ones before, but I think that they are so pretty. So I decided to get them because there were all four of them. And here is my find of the day. I have been looking for one of these coffee pots for so long. I have never found one, you guys, in all of my years of thrifting. They sell for a lot online. I think over $100, so I was pretty excited about it. These cucumber salt and pepper shakers, I don't know why. I think they're so cute. They did have chips on them, though, so I didn't end up getting them, but I think they'd be really cute in the kitchen. I didn't end up finding any art today, which was kind of a bummer because this is one of the best ones for finding good art. I really liked these antique frames, these oval ones, but not really the art inside of them. I just showed you guys last week my amazing hand chairs, but when I'm sitting down on them, my feet don't quite touch the ground. So I think these little footstools would be perfect if I get them recovered. Looks like I'm gonna be having a DIY coming soon. Throw pillows are one of those things it is so hard for me to justify ever buying brand new because they are so expensive and I always come across good ones at the thrift store. These ones are beautiful. Unfortunately, one of them didn't have the tassels, but you know what? I don't care. I'm going to get them anyway. The cart is full at our first Goodwill stop. I want to show you guys something I picked up for my husband. This is a silly game called Boss Monster and we played it with some friends a couple years ago and I remember really liking it. So I think that there's going to be a lot of game nights in the future because I'm one of six kids and we're all nerdy gamers. So this will be perfect. <music> That was incredible. It is not very often that I get an entire cart full at a single Goodwill. I'm excited about a lot of these pieces, but I think the thing that I'm the most excited about and I can't wait to get home are these footstools. Now these were only $14.99 each and they are nice, solid, heavy wood. And what's funny about it is you can tell that they've been recovered a few times because there's a couple different fabrics poking out there on the bottom. These are so easy to DIY at home to change out the fabric. All you have to do literally is unscrew this, take your fabric, lay it across the top, trim it and cut it, fold it over. You don't even have to staple it. You could just kind of do what these people did where you pull it tight and then screw it back down. I would definitely recommend stapling it and that's what I'm going to do. So stay tuned next week because I'm going to be recovering both of these and I have the perfect fabric at home. 
it's so funny how I pick up things and I know someday I'm going to use them down the road or at least I hope I will and it's so wonderful when I finally find exactly what they were meant for and wait till you guys see this fabric that I have. I am definitely not a mid-century modern purist even though you always hear me say the word mid-century mid-century it's because I think I'm very very drawn to the clean lines and the modernist designs of a lot of things that were made during the 60s and 70s but a lot of my inspiration has come throughout my years of traveling abroad and I think just watching documentaries. I watch a lot of National Geographic documentaries from places all over the world. I love to learn how, you know, they hand loom certain textiles in India. I love to learn about new things and I'm heavily influenced by all of the beautiful patterns and designs around the world, especially in architecture. So these are beautiful hand painted Mexican pottery tiles. And these trays are really great because you can actually carry this tray with the handles out if you're having a summer outdoor party and you want to bring some drinks or snacks out these are actually functional not just beautiful and that's something that I feel like I've picked up from a lot of other cultures is that they put a lot of effort and work and craftsmanship into their pieces so it's made for a functional purpose but they just take the time to make it beautifully and I think that's something that we're lacking here in America I feel like we are often just trying to crank out a new trend and get something out as quickly as possible where a lot of these pieces the history of the designs and the patterns goes back hundreds if not thousands of years so I think that's a really beautiful thing to celebrate and admire and incorporate into your own home okay speaking of appreciating other cultures and traditions I do not even drink beer I mean I have drank beer before but I definitely prefer wine over beer any day given the chance I think the only time that I was excited to try beer was when I went to Leavenworth I knew I was gonna be trying some really good beer but when I saw this I had to get it because I didn't think that there could possibly be a more Laura beer stein I mean it's blue it's like hand-painted pottery it's got a lion on it and it's got this beautiful scene here on the pier lid. These pieces tend to always be signed so that makes it really easy to do your online research and I know a lot of these beer steins can be worth a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars. I would probably estimate without doing any research on this one that it's probably more in like the forty to sixty dollar range but it was in perfect condition and I thought it was really fun and it had a lion on it so I had to get it. I think a lot of these pieces came from the same house. It's very likely that there was an estate sale or someone was doing a big cleaning and they had a lot of 1970s things that got donated at once. Whenever you're at a thrift store and you see something you really love and it's from a specific era, that is your clue that it's possible somebody donated a whole bunch of things that could be from that same era. So make sure you do extra digging at the thrift store, go through all of the shelves, all the end caps, Maybe even hang around and wait for them to roll out new bins because I feel like sometimes I have found the most stuff in one location at one stop. A lot of times if it gets donated together, it ends up out on the floor at the same time. So gallery walls are one of my favorite things to put together. And although I usually use mostly art, I really think pieces like this are super fun to mix into it because it gives it something interesting and a lot of texture. And it also gives you a place to pop in plants. I love wall vases. I have a few in my personal collection. I will pop in a picture here of this beautiful Israeli piece that I have that's from the 1980s. And I even just added this pair to my shop sale that launched yesterday. So this is definitely something that I would keep an eye out for when you're at the thrift stores or vintage malls because it's not just art to go in a gallery wall. I personally think it looks even better. The more texture and variety of items you have in your gallery wall, the better. And you can never have too many plants. There's this weird thing when you sell online where you have to think about how an item photographs because some of my favorite vintage vines that I've ever come across they just don't translate on camera I don't know what it is but once I take a photo of them I'm like eh, that doesn't look good and I put it over here and I try it like this that doesn't look good so I give up and those are the items that I take to flea markets I still remember the first time I photographed a pair of vintage food dog bookends it was probably about five or six years ago and they were this beautiful like blue and green ombre and I set one of them kind of close to the lens and I set one of them back so it would be a little bit blurry and I took the photo and I still is one of my favorite photos I've ever taken so there's just something about the vibrant colors pottery photographs very very good and yeah that's my story about food dogs I love to pick up these pieces I was so sad that this one was just a single one but it's very beautiful 
Now, I wasn't sure if this one was an old one, but it does have an actual stamp there in the bottom. So I felt like either way, it was definitely worth picking up for only $4.99. Did you know that food dogs are actually Chinese lions? So I love lions, so it makes perfect sense that I love food dogs. Can never have too many plants, so I picked up this cast metal base to use as a plant stand. I think this would look great with just a little piece of pottery and a plant overflowing. It's such a simple way to keep your pottery off of your coffee tables and your credenzas, so you don't have to worry about a little bit of water damage if you have a clay pot the water can absorb through the pot and damage your table so you don't want that I didn't really know what this one was I feel like lately I've just been buying things if I think that they're really interesting even if I don't know what it is it does have a stamp here on the bottom that's kind of gross there's like hair stuck on there this definitely needs to get a good washing anyways there's a stamp there in the cast metal and I liked the little leaf design here on the front and I don't know if this is for baking I is I don't think so I'm pretty sure it's a candle holder so that's what I'm gonna assume it is and that's what I'm gonna sell it as it was blue so it was only two dollars and fifty cents and it's a nice heavy cast metal piece so I think this would be really pretty with four little tea lights in there I think it's a candle holder what do you guys think you think that's a candle holder or do you make little tiny muffins in it? Spring is here. This is actually Easter weekend. And I feel like this is the perfect kind of pastel, purpley blue color right now to add into your spring style. And these ones were only $1.99. They are really well-made pieces. And there was the full set of four. I inspected them good and there were no chips at all. This one is a Japanese stoneware bowl and I thought the colors on it were really pretty and I love this sweepy design because it reminds me of ocean waves and it was only a dollar ninety nine and these pedestal ones look beautiful because even though the inside is just kind of a swirly neutral color when you put them up on a shelf they look so pretty and these are the perfect types of designs to look for when you're wanting to mix and match patterns because there's a lot going on but it's also really soft and subtle and neutral. Well, I'm excited about this one. This one I'm keeping for myself, I'm sorry. Look at the shape. It's got a beautiful green color to it. And it's got this beautiful bell shape. Doesn't that look almost like the Liberty Bell? So this is something that's hard to find in a lot of mid-century pottery is a drainage hole. This is really important if you wanna keep your plants healthy and happy. I feel like so many of the gainy pots and the pots that I collect never have drainage holes. So I was really excited about this one. Oh my gosh. I just realized this was metal. This whole time I thought this was pottery. That just made this even cooler. Now I don't even know if it is a planter. Now I'm wondering, oh my gosh, there's like little screw holes almost in the bottom. Do you think this was a bell? <laughs> I think it was a bell. Do you think it was a bell? That's so funny. I totally thought that this was pottery and I was even scared when she put it into the container because I was like, no, don't chip the edges. Wow. That made this way cooler to me. I don't know why. That's hilarious, you guys. Whatever it is, I love it. I guess my advice to you guys is if you think it looks cool, then get it. You don't even need to know what it is. Okay, I know what this one is. This is a mid-century Japanese pottery piece, and these are typically used as candle holders. It's the perfect size for a pillar candle holder. I've definitely used these as plant stands before, and this one's in great shape. There are no chips on it, which is really good. I picked up one or two that looked just like this before that I had to paint because a lot of the gold color was chipping off. So I had to do a little bit of touch up, but this one's in perfect condition and it was only $2.99. These little cuties are beautiful. I actually don't think that these are Oregon Myrtle wood. I'm not sure what type of wood this is. It just looks like it has a little bit more of an orangish hue than I typically see on the Oregon Myrtle wood. These were $2.99 each and they're beautiful hand turned candle holders. They've got the little brass ring right there. And I love these very minimal modernist design pieces. I feel like they are timeless and you can incorporate these in any style. You don't have to be into mid-century modern, I feel like to make these look beautiful. You could even use these in a current modern farmhouse style, I think. So pretty and they were only $2.99 each. I love tassels on everything. Unfortunately, the other pillow didn't have the four tassels on it. So I'm not sure if I'm going to try to DIY and add additional tassels or if I'll just leave them and let them be like mix match. One with tassels, one without. 
These are going to be perfect to add to my living room because I have a yellow vintage chair that I got at Goodwill for I think $24.99. It was such a steal, but it's the only yellowish gold piece that I have in my house other than accent pillows. I think that these are going to be really pretty to tie in the yellow from across the room. I told you guys this morning it was going to be a good day. Although this piece is a little more traditional than my typical style, you guys know that I like things eclectic and bohemian and I think that this is a really beautiful piece. I have sold a few of these in the past and they sell for a lot of money. I've never had one with this cool swirl design before, just the kind of plain candlestick. This one is silver plated and I think that this should retail for probably around $80 to $100. Now this company made solid sterling silverware and candles back in the day and if this was a solid sterling piece this would probably be worth a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars it's got the stamp here in the bottom it is not a sterling piece it is silver plated but it is a beautiful piece nonetheless and definitely worth picking up for only twenty dollars and my hand is actually getting tired right now because this probably weighs um, six pounds that'd be my guess six actual pounds they're really really great pieces so this is the piece that I was super geeking out about silently when I saw it on the shelf. Now I have never found one of these before, but I've been looking forever. So this is a coffee pot and these are from the 60s and 70s. And this brand is made in Germany and these sell online for probably over a hundred dollars. I'm going to guess that some of these pieces could be worth 150. I am so excited to add this one to my personal collection because I love making coffee and I like doing it the old-fashioned way too. This one has the original wood here, the leather roping, and the bead. Today was a great day. I can't believe we only went to one Goodwill and I'm gonna call it a day. I want to get home and make myself some coffee, get this stuff washed up, put away in the shop, and I'm gonna go get my fabric out of the basement and get it ready and I will get started on the DIY. So stay tuned. That episode's gonna come out next week. I cannot wait to show you the before and after of these footstools. And now it's time to announce the hand winners. <laughs> Thank you so much to every single one of you guys who put a comment on that video. I am blown away by how many of you guys opened up and shared real life stories with me. It makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing and that you guys are the right people for me to be spending my time with and hanging out with and interacting with. So I wanted to say thank you everyone for entering that contest and for opening up. And thank you just so much for being a support system for me. It's been a wild year. I know a lot of us are going through a lot right now. So I just wanted to say that I am so grateful for you guys.